Hi, today you're going to learn about the power of photography through something called the photo triangle. This camera right here can be a real powerhouse if you just simply take it off automatic and then you have the power is in your hands. So let's talk about the photo triangle real quick. There are three things that make the photo triangle work. There's f-stop, there's shutter speed, and there's ISO. These three things can do all kinds of things but we need to understand how to use them. Shutter speed is one of those things that I'll give you some numbers and we can start with them, but you're going to experiment on your own and that's going to be fun for you. So for example, when you're shooting every day, I like to keep my camera around 1 25th of a second. If, I'm going to sh if movement is happening, maybe I bump up to 200th of a second. Now if I'm, in, if I'm recording sports or I'm capturing moments that are happening real quick, like a dog jumping in the air and I want to freeze it, you might go over 500th of a second. So shutter speed is one of those things that has general rule of thumbs. I've heard photographers say, I can't hold my hand less than 60th of a second. I'll, I'll start noticing blur. So if you're looking at your camera and you're looking at your photos and you're thinking to yourself, my, my shots are coming off a little blurry, I'm in manual mode, you might want to look at shutter speed. Okay, That's one of the first places to look. Second of all, let's talk about the, the second concept of photography. Um, we have f-stop which is nothing more than the how big the, ca the aperture or the, the blades of the camera are going to open up and close and let light in. So when we talk about f-stop, it can be really confusing for some. However, let's just make it real simple. If I have a big number, I'm having a small hole. And if I have a small number, I'm going to have a big hole. I'm going to be letting a lot of light in. So let's, let's use it for example. Uh, I say f-22. Small hole, F2, big hole. Okay, pretty simple, right? All right, now that hole is letting light in. It is not only letting light in, but it's also controlling the depth of field. It's often you'll see photographers write this as like DOF. Okay, that's literally the subject matter. From me on to the front of me to the back of me is my depth of field. When I press that little button down and I see that little red dot, I'm talking about that it's like throwing an anchor and saying, hey, that's where I'm going to start my focal point. And from that focal point, that little red dot, is how f the beginning of me to the end of me is going to be in focus. If I have f22 from right here, probably very on far back is going to be on fo in focus. Now if I, have, if I have f2, I might be doing, it's just going to be from me right here, maybe behind me is pretty much blurred out. Okay. Now these are all gener generalities and they can change with the camera moving in and out, but these are, they, they hold pretty well to be accurate and you'll see the the benefits in your photography when you shoot. So again, I'm going to give you some scenes now real quick. Uh, you're in the mountains, you see a tree in front of you, you see the mountains in the back, and you want to get the mountain and the tree in focus. I would be using a high f-stop. Okay. Now if I was at the, if I was in a, in a garden and I was going to do a portrait, I'd be using a very low f-stop, letting a lot of light in at one time, but yet at the same time blurring the background. Okay, so we have high f-stops and low f-stops controlling the depth of field. Not only controlling the depth of field, but in controlling how much light is being let in, how big the aperture blades are coming down. Okay, the third concept of the photo triangle is ISO, which is nothing more than the sensitivity of light. The sensitivity of light. The, how sensitive is this camera going to be to light that comes in? Is it going to be extremely sensitive or is it not? Okay, so with a high ISO, I'm talking about uh, maybe 6400. I'm going to encounter a lot of things like grain, and that's going to really, you know, you might use the grain to your advantage and say that, hey, that's your stylistic effect, but in true photography, you want to minimize the grain. You want to create images that bring grain down, create a picture that's almost glassy smooth, and works for you. So, for example, uh, if I'm at a candlelit scene um, at a restaurant and, and I take a picture of a couple, uh, there's not very much light. I'm going to have to bunch, bump the ISO up and I might have to bump it up higher and higher. Okay. Eventually, I'm going to bring the whole scene in, but it also I might also encounter a lot of grain. So what about um, a low ISO? I go outside. It's a beautiful sunny day. Don't need for ISO 400. I can be at ISO 100 and I'll be fine. Okay. So you have low ISOs and high ISOs. They uh, control sensitivity of light. And as I explain this whole photo triangle here with you, just imagine that it, is, it can balance on either end. We can tip the, the triangle either way.
okay? So now that we have talked about the photo triangle, and you can think about that for a little while, I want to talk to you about metering, okay? So inside your camera, when you hold it to your eye, and you look through it right here, you're going to see a little dot at the bottom and a plane. That little triangle will move as you press this little button right there, halfway down, that will move to the left or to the right as you move your camera around. That's called metering. We're metering the scene. And the camera's saying, if it's over on the far right, this picture's overdeveloped. If it's over on the far left, it's underexposed. And that, controlling that, and getting that, that triangle right in the center is metering. And that's why that's so incredibly important. Okay, you wanna get your pictures as a beginning photographer, you want to get that little triangle right in the center. So the metering mode becomes important. And so you'll see, you'll move it around, you'll have your camera looking down, and then you'll notice, hey, it's over far to the left. Well, you might have to do something. You might have to bump up your ISO. You might have to slow down your shutter speed, let more light in. You might have to go to a lower f-stop. Now, if I'm far to the right and that triangle's way over here, I'm letting too much light in, right? It's, it's, it's being overexposed. I might have to let less light in. I might have to crank the f-stop down, or I'm sorry, crank the f-stop up, giving a higher f-stop, or a smaller uh, hole. Um, hopefully that all makes sense to you. Uh, inversely, I imagine if your picture's overexposed, you could speed up the film. You could bring down the ISO. So I've given you the extremes, and you've got to find the middle. There are three different, there are actually four, but there are three uh, metering modes we're going to use today. We're going to talk about spot, evaluative, and center-weighted. Spot um, metering mode is for when there's one thing you want to make sure gets developed correctly. For example, you have an eagle flying out of a nest, or you have a player, a soccer player, running down the field. You don't really care about the, the, anything around them. You just want to get that one person correctly developed, and that's why spot metering mode is so clutch. So the, the second thing I want to talk about is center-weighted. Imagine you have a group of people standing, and you just want to get them in the correct development. And when I say correct development, that they're not underexposed or overexposed. That's what I'm talking about. You want to get that correct exposure with center-weighted. Okay? So not only do we have center-weighted, we have spot. I'm going to talk about evaluative. Evaluative is really cool in that it takes the corners of the, the view, the, all the four corners, and then a little bit in the center, and it measures that whole scene. And it measures the whole scene, and it gives you an appropriate metering mode. Uh, it, it appropriately uh, exposes. And nine times out of ten, you're going to stick your camera in a valuative. But when you see the, the time where you're like, I really care about getting that subject matter right there in, in frame, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, spot or center weighted. So those are important to remember. Now that we've gone over the photo triangle, I want to talk about some general rules for photography. Things that you should remember as you shoot. And these will make you a better photographer. The rule of thirds. I can't iterate it enough. You want to place your subject matter in one of the corners. Okay? Imagine that your viewfinder has two lines going down the center and two lines going across. Okay? So you want to take your subject matter and put it in one of the corners. Down here, up here, over here. That's where you want your, your film. That's where you want to shoot. Okay? Now, now that we've talked about the rule of thirds, let's go on to the next topic. I want to talk about leading lines. So leading lines is incredibly important, and that will cause you to create a very interesting composition. Anytime you have a leading line, say a road, and it leads off into the distance or creates a point where you can draw emphasis, do it. That's awesome. That creates, or that creates a great scene. Uh, maybe I have a, a wall that goes all the way down and leads to a bride who's, who's sitting there, or a person, a dog who is sitting there. Um, use leading lines. They're all throughout the world. You'll see them every day. Okay? So we've gone over leading lines. We've gone over the rule of thirds. Now let's talk about angles. Every beginning photographer is going to pick it up and just shoot, pick the camera up and just shoot just like that. Don't do it. Get down low or get up high. Get in an angle. Create an interesting shot. Can't stress it enough. Then I want to talk about repetition. The use of repetition is important. You see repetition all the time in the world. Maybe it's a mirror with a whole bunch of little mirror paint, uh, little panes in it that you can reflect from. Maybe it's the petals on a flower. But you see repetition all the time. Utilize it in your photography. Okay. Now that we've talked about those, let's talk. Let's div dig a little deeper into the camera. Okay. I want to go ahead and talk about white balance. White balance is important because when you think about white balance, you're like, what is white balance? In your head, you wonder, what is white balance? White balance is really the color of light and measuring it. 
okay? And we'll talk about that in another time.